、エイチロオーダー、ヒロヒコアラキ、ナオコタキウチ、ナオキウラサワ。These are the names of just some of the legendary pro mangakas who have made some of the biggest and best mangas of our generation. One Piece, Jojo, Sailor Moon, Monster. I'm sure you also dream of reaching the same height someday. But what does it take to be a pro? What does it take to get published? To finally get good at making manga? If you're curious to know, then stick around until the very end because we're gonna share the top five skills you need to become a pro mangaka. In case you've been trying to put your manga out for years, but it's not really working out, and you finally feel like it's time to put your story on paper and inspire other people with your message, then we invite you to book a consultation call with us and see if you'd be a good fit to be a founding member of our online one shot manga drawing program. We'll teach you everything you need to know about drawing, inking, character design, backgrounds, perspective, writing, paneling, storyboarding. And all the skills you need to create a compelling one shot. You'll be working with pro mangakas live during Zoom sessions, and you'll be together with a community of aspiring mangakas just like you. So make sure to fill out the application form very carefully. Think you have what it takes? You can book a consultation call with us through the link in the description. We're super excited to speak with you. Have you ever wondered why doujinshi or fanfiction exists? Sometimes the actual anime or manga is already over, and yet you have these raving fans creating their own stories of their favorite characters. It's like people just can't get enough of them. The original story is already done, but they want to continue imagining their fave character in different situations. In doujinshi or fanfics, the setting might change, the story might change, but what remains constant is always the character. That's the power of developing a character your readers can fall in love with. If you want to make a memorable manga, then you gotta have memorable characters. Readers want characters that they can relate to, characters that inspire them, that stir their emotions. When your fave character achieves something, you feel happy for them. When they feel sad, you feel sad. When they feel angry, you feel angry. But how do you create such rich and well developed characters that can touch people's hearts? After speaking with hundreds of beginners, we feel like there are three main levels for this. Level one is the visual design. A lot of artists feel like as long as they design a new character, it's enough to call them an OC. As we've mentioned before, it's not just about designing a cool looking character. The visuals are just the tip of the iceberg. So don't spend all your time just redrawing and obsessing over your character concept art. Level two is when you're able to create your character's profile and even flesh out their specs. You've got their basic info down, like their name, age, occupation, birthday, hometown, special powers, weaknesses, goals, etc. But honestly, these are all still surface. Level info on your character. It's like seeing someone's resume. You get a general idea of their experience and who they are, but you don't really know them as a person. So we have level three. This is the most difficult part of character development. It's when you've truly fleshed out and understood your character's personality, thoughts, feelings, behaviors. Works. It's like you've seen the resume and now you're meeting this person for an actual interview. How do they walk, talk, and react to each question? I mean, if your character were to eat lunch at a restaurant, which restaurant would they go to and why? What do they order on the menu? Why do they choose that? How do they eat their food? Are they messy? Do they leave food on the table? Or do they eat everything until the very last bite, despite how full they are? If I ask 100 different people these questions, I'd probably get 100 different answers. That's because we've all experienced different things in life and we have different ways of thinking and making decisions. You have to imagine your original manga characters as unique individuals, just like you and me. They have their own feelings and reactions to different situations. You have to ask yourself how your OC would think, feel, and react when certain things happen to them. And why? What have they gone through in their lives that have made them turn out this way? Let's take Naruto, for example. 
He loves eating ramen, especially from Ichiraku Ramen. It gives us a glimpse of his life. He's only 12 years old, eating at a place usually associated with middle aged salarymen in Japan. Ramen is quick and not exactly the healthiest choice for a growing boy, but it makes sense because he doesn't have a family that can cook and pack bentos for him. He hates the three minute wait for cooking instant ramen, and you can already tell that this kid is kinda impatient. At some point in the story, we learn that the owner of Ichiraku Ramen, Teuchi, actually offered Naruto some ramen when he was still a kid. While most of the villagers shunned Naruto, Teuchi san showed kindness and compassion. It made a deep impact in Naruto's life, and obviously, we can see it throughout the series. If you learn all these three stages of character development, then you're more likely to create characters that people will remember even after your story is done. We ask our pro mangaka mentor, Rena Saya, what's the hardest part about being a mangaka? She's had over 20 years of pro mangaka experience, and she said the most challenging thing is coming up with good ideas. We've spoken to a lot of beginners, and they talk about having so many cool stories and characters, but how do you actually know if it's a good idea? Coming up with something you like and something that a bigger audience would like are two different things altogether. We encourage you to brainstorm different ideas before settling on one. A great way to come up with manga ideas is by filling in these blanks first. What if, insert subject, and then insert a verb. For example, what if a delinquent high schooler joins the basketball team? You basically get something like slam dunk. What if you try other combinations? Huh? What if a delinquent high schooler joins the baseball team? The chess club, the dance club, the student council, a K-pop idol group? You can create such totally ridiculous scenarios like what if high school basketball players had superpowers and boom, you get Kuroko no Basuke. The great thing about manga is that there is no limit to your imagination. You can have a character with a chainsaw for a face or a notebook that can kill people when you write their name on it. While you're brainstorming ideas, don't just stick to one. Try putting together different characters in different situations. You might surprise yourself with how much more unique ideas you can come up with. Don't be scared to write up to 50, 100, even 150 combinations. It's not easy to come up with that many, so don't force yourself to do all of this in just one day. Give yourself some time and spread it across a few days. You can try to find inspiration as you go about your daily life. Our mentor, Rena Sensei, goes out and enjoys other hobbies to refresh herself and come up with new ideas. You can observe things happening around you, the people you meet, the places you go to. You can watch movies, read manga, and explore novels to find even more inspiration. It might sound like a lot of work, and it actually is. But I just want to remind you that every great thing we have in our lives today, the manga that's inspired you, the phone or computer you're watching this video on, they all took a lot of hard work and effort. If you want to make the next big hit or get an anime adaptation, then you got gotta be willing to invest the hard work and effort to get there. After squeezing out everything you can, narrow down your ideas to your top 10. Narrow it further to your top 5 and try to ask other people which idea they like the best. If you can help it, don't just ask your family and friends. You want to join Facebook groups or Discord servers? Or if you have a following, ask your followers. At the end of the day, you want to create something that resonates with a larger audience, so try to ask as many people as possible. A good manga tells a visually compelling story. Unlike a movie, there's no sound or movement in manga. So a mangaka's biggest, most important job is to make sure that readers can easily read their manga from start to finish. They need their readers to be invested in the story. And how do you do that? How do you make sure readers keep turning the page until the end? Shonen Jump mangakas like Tite Kubo, Shun Saeki, and Kenta Shinohara all say you need variety. Achieving the perfect balance of variety can be a very slippery slope. Too much variety and you could risk your manga being too bloated with too many new ideas and messy visuals that could create so many issues with your plot and pacing. 
too little variety could risk your manga being too boring. Like, boring enough for the readers to not even finish it. If you want to strike that balance in variety, you have to consider the rhythm, the volume, and the placement of panels and dialogue in your manga. These help create a clear flow for your story. So the question is, how do you get better at this? Before anything, remember that mangakas are readers themselves. To become a pro, you have to be an avid reader of manga. According to legendary mangaka Hirohiko Araki, creator of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, you gotta study manga, analyze it panel by panel. That's how you pick up some effective techniques for your own manga. I mean, JoJo might be pretty big now, but Araki Sensei has actually spent countless hours just studying other popular shonen manga. To strike this crucial balance in variety, you need to create a storyboard. We've noticed that a lot of beginners skip the storyboarding process. And as we've mentioned in our previous videos, you cannot skip this part, all right? Storyboarding is when you plot out the rough sketches of your manga from beginning to end. You decide the paneling and overall layout of your whole story. Where do you place your speech bubbles? How do you set up the scene? This step is so important to make sure you have a good rhythm on your story, engaging panels, and a smooth flow to each page. When you're aiming to be a pro, your assigned editor will also go through your storyboard with you and provide feedback during this stage in production. We've had someone ask us, so how many panels should there be on one page? You want to limit it to five to six panels per page. Anything beyond that could look too crowded. We've seen pro mangakas like Urasawa use eight panels, but it takes practice and skill to make it work. One common problem we see with beginner mangakas is that their layout and paneling sometimes turn out a bit confusing. The last thing you want is your readers going, Mm, is this the next panel? Um, that doesn't seem to make sense. Maybe this one? I've personally experienced this and it's not fun. It breaks the flow of emotions and disconnects your reader from the story. You have to master the art of paneling so that your audience can read everything in the right order and not even think about it. By the end of the page, they'll just naturally want to know more. Let's compare these two manga pages. Look at the page on the left. The paneling is pretty straightforward, but also pretty boring. Mm. It's the same panel structure used throughout the entire page. It's just too repetitive. Whereas the one on the right, it's more dynamic, it catches the reader's eye. There's so much variety in perspectives, movement, backgrounds, and panels that it makes readers want to turn the page. This is what you need to aim for. Most manga techniques are actually from movies. When you look at these panels, you can see how mangakas visually represent sound and movement with speed lines, line work, screen tones, and sound effects. You see, just like a movie, a manga needs variation. According to Araki Sensei, switching up the pattern of shots in your panels can really help add more variety. For example, if you use the pattern close up, close up, long shot in one page, and repeat it in the next page, it would look too repetitive. So instead, maybe you can start with a long shot on the next page to spice it up. Try to avoid using the same shots for about half of the page. When you look at your storyboard, you can easily switch patterns around to keep things interesting. So the next time you look at your manga and ask yourself, is this good enough? Is it too boring? Here's a checklist you can keep in mind. One, a variety of shots. Two, dynamic movement. 3. Speech bubbles are spaced out and not too crowded. And 4. An overall smooth and easy reading experience. When you're not a pro and not making manga for a living, it's so easy to get distracted. You have a job or you're a student. You want to be a mangaka, but as time goes on, you start to get busier and busier. You spend less and less time on the things you actually love. And then one day, it just hits you. I've always wanted to create my own manga, but I haven't done anything towards it. Everything else that I'm doing doesn't really give me that sense of fulfillment. What am I doing? The reality is that a lot of beginners feel intimidated by all the hard work you need to make it as a pro. And we're not gonna sugarcoat this. It's a ton of work. 
Sean and Jump staff have met with thousands of aspiring mangakas, reviewed thousands of one-shots and serializations. Their advice for amateurs who come to them for feedback is this. Ask yourself, do I want to create manga? Do I want to be a professional manga author? If your ultimate goal isn't to create manga, then going pro is going to be super difficult. You have to be passionate about making manga. You've got to love the process. You also need a lot of discipline and a system that works for you. Ultimately, you also need to make time for it. If your manga creation time has always taken a backseat to other priorities, you gotta change something in your lifestyle to accommodate your manga goals. Take a look at this weekly schedule of a pro mangaka. They spend up to two to three days storyboarding and consulting with editors, three to four days finalizing their manga chapter, aka their manuscript with assistants, and then they immediately start working on the next chapter. This mangaka sleeps for about an average of six hours per day and only gets three hours of free time per week. Just three hours. <laughs> So you see, the life of a pro can be pretty intense, and they've basically mastered the art of time management. When you're trying to meet such tight deadlines, you need to have your schedule organized and every minute blocked down. Just to be clear, we're not saying you have to go all in and dive headfirst into scheduling your days exclusively around your manga, but making time for it. Putting it in your calendar can make all the difference. This might seem like a small step, but once you get into the habit of practicing consistently, it'll be easier to stay on track. As we mentioned in our previous videos, pro mangakas work about 200 hours to create one single shonen jump chapter that's about 16 to 20 pages long. But since you're not a pro, you're gonna need more time, maybe around three hours instead. According to our pro mangaka mentor, Rena Saya, in manga technical colleges, students have about three months to finish a 16-page one-shot. So you can try to give yourself the same deadline. If you give yourself three months to work on your one-shot, then make a weekly timetable for it. You can try scheduling three hours per day or maybe even longer on days with no school or work. Adjust or extend your timeline depending on how many hours you can dedicate to your manga per day. For each work session, make a list of all the things you want to focus on. Once you have your schedule, stick to it. Someone invites you to play a video game? Say no. Someone invites you to a party? Say no. It might be hard to turn down your friends or even family at first, but each no is a yes towards your manga goal. You're opening a new door and a new future for yourself. Just in case you're tempted to work on multiple projects or manga ideas, Please don't. You might think jumping around two to three stories at once is productive, but not really. You're probably gonna end up with half-finished ideas and zero finished work. Focus on one manga at a time. We interviewed our pro mangaka mentor, Nao Yazawa. She has over 30 years of experience in the manga industry and has basically done it all. One-shots, serializations, winning contests, working with publishers, self-publishing, you name it. We asked her, so what's the number one skill to become a pro mangaka? She said, it's the never give up skill. We've already mentioned this in our previous videos, but it never gets old. Honestly, this may as well be the hardest skill to develop and maintain. Seinen manga editor Yohei Sadoshima, who had worked at Japanese publishing company Kodansha for over 20 years, shared his own experience on his YouTube channel. He saw hundreds of aspiring mangakas contacting them every day. Out of a hundred, only one of those aspiring mangakas would be able to complete a chapter that's fully inked and toned. We're not talking about serializations or even one-shots to be published here. We're talking about total beginners like you wanting to get a break. According to Sadoshima-san, a lot of aspiring mangakas would come in starry-eyed with their stories, ideas, and even their storyboard. But then they eventually just fizzled out. Editors would give them advice, ask them to redo or edit their storyboard, and these mangakas would just never come back. Just like you, they also had other things going on in their lives. 
school, work, responsibilities, but they just couldn't juggle all of that while working on their manga. That means if you can finish at least one manga chapter, you'd actually be part of the top 1% of aspiring mangakas that make it to this stage. That's why we keep encouraging you to create your first one-shot manga. Just to set expectations right though, this single chapter is just the starting point. Don't expect to get instantly famous. You'd have to be a unicorn to get it right on your first try. But they do exist though, unicorns. And you might already know one, Hajime Isayama, the creator of Attack on Titan. Did you know he won his first manga award when he was just 19 years old? This was the beginning of Attack on Titan and it was his first ever story. He became pretty famous in the mangaka world for being a special case of hitting a home run on your first try. He won the magazine Grand Prix Award by Kodansha in 2006. But he wasn't ready for serialization yet. Even after winning the award, his editor actually encouraged him to continue practicing. He studied other shonen manga to improve his fight scenes, and he was even asked to study shoujo manga to improve his line work. He continued to join contests and even won more awards in 2008. In September 2009, Attack on Titan finally debuted in Bisatsu Shonen magazine as a serialized title. Isayama Sensei may be a unicorn, but it still took him three years from his first manga award until he was finally ready for serialization. He was patient. He took advice from his editor. He kept honing his craft. And most of all, he never gave up. If you want guidance, structure, accountability to develop the skills you need to make it into the top 1% of aspiring mangakas who actually finish their first one-shot, then we invite you to apply to our one-shot manga drawing program. The link is in the description. In the meantime, you can avoid some of the most common beginner mangaka mistakes by watching this video.